have you ever wanted to build a really good investing portfolio? When I look at other investors, it seems like many just go out and buy stocks, giving little thought to how they all work together, or they just chase trendy ideas. Today, I want to dive into how to construct the ideal portfolio with a few choice ETFs. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Dollars and Cents, helping you make sense of making dollars. We'll start this video off by building a basic example portfolio and adjust it according to risk over time. Note that this video isn't exactly investing advice. Really, I just wanna give you an example of a fairly balanced portfolio and present you with ideas for better ways to invest those hard earned dollars. Feel free to swap out any of the ETFs or stocks mentioned to see what works best for you. Let's explore this example portfolio with Steve. Steve is a working guy in his early 20s. He's just beginning to invest. So let's take a look into what an ideal portfolio looks like for Steve. To keep this as simple as possible, we'll construct his portfolio using only five ETFs. If you don't know what an ETF is, go ahead and watch my video on them for a more in-depth explanation. Link in the description. Essentially though, it's a product allowing you to get exposure to a wide range of stocks. In Steve's portfolio, the first and largest position is VUG at 30%. This ETF holds a collection of growth stocks, companies that are often smaller in size but offer higher return potential through the stock's price increasing. Generally, these companies don't pay dividends. His second position would be SCHD, a channel favorite, at 20%. SCHD holds the top 100 best dividend-paying companies in the US based on how financially healthy they are. Large companies that pay dividends are often more stable in the long run against growth stocks. However, Steve could lose some of that growth potential because those companies in SCHD don't focus on growing quickly. Instead, they opt to return a sizable chunk of their profits back to their shareholders. For his third position at 20%, Steve's going international with VEA. This ETF is another Vanguard ETF. It allows Steve to own some of the best international companies, specifically in nations with higher levels of development in regards to their economies. These countries include the UK, Norway, Germany, South Korea, and Canada. Bringing into international markets can be hard for US investors, so using an ETF like VEA gives Steve broad exposure without all the extra work. The fourth fund in Steve's portfolio, also representing a 20% position, is FRDM. This particular ETF allows investors to hold the best companies from the most free emerging markets. These countries include Taiwan, Chile, and Poland. Each country is given a freedom score based on a wide array of factors from economic to social freedoms, with the most free countries making up the largest portion of the ETF. For Steve, this is ideal and allows him to invest in smaller countries that can see faster economic growth. Then, to round out Steve's portfolio is BND, taking up the last 10%. BND is bonds, and it gives him a large variety, anything from government to company-issued bonds. Now, most investors would be repulsed, saying who would ever want to own bonds with the low-rate environment we're in? Well, actually, I would, and for a specific reason. You won't get the same kind of returns of bonds as you would with equities. But Steve understands this, and the bonds are special in their own way. He can sell those bonds to buy more equities, or if he holds them, they can give his portfolio stability. As stock prices drop, bond prices generally rise. It's hard to see right now, sure, but I also think it's better to invest in bonds than to have just plain old cash sitting in a bank account. I feel that this portfolio is ideal for Steve. He's still in his early 20s and he gains a lot of diversification and generally gets higher returns. There's also a lot of risk involved with those emerging markets and growth stocks in general, but he still has a lot of time to make changes based on his needs and risks. So let's fast forward in time. Steve is now in his mid 40s and he might not want as much risk involved in his portfolio. That means he's reduced his positions in ETFs where emerging markets and growth stocks hold more weight. His positions in VUG and FRDM have decreased. However, his position in VEA remains at 20%, while his positions in SCHD and BND have both increased by 10% each. 
I think that these are good moves. As he gets older, Steve is reducing the chance of large drawdowns from his riskier investments and diminishes the likelihood of panic selling. No, he's looking at investments that offer more in the way of dividends and stability, like SCHD and BND. If you watch any of my videos, you'll know, or find out, that I believe that dividend-paying companies, these boring companies, and bonds fare significantly better during market crashes and large drawdowns. That's why I think it's a good idea to shift away from the growth-centered mindset to a focus on stability for anyone in their 40s. You are invested, you might have settled down, you have a lot of responsibilities, and you want your money to work for you, not risk losing it with those riskier investments. Now, let's fast forward one more time. Steve is now ready to retire in his mid to late 60s. He's worked hard and wants to enjoy his retirement. His portfolio changed over the years again. This time, he completely removed FRDM from his portfolio and cut back again on VUG and this time also VEA. On the flip side of that, Steve increased his position in SCHD and BND. While growth was great for Steve in his 20s and manageable in his 40s, Steve doesn't want to take any more major risks now that he's in his 60s. There's still a little bit there in with VUG and VEA true, but now his focus has almost completely shifted to dividends. As we said, Steve wants to enjoy his retirement, not worrying about losing his money through crashes or drawdowns. If you're in your 60s, hopefully your ultimate goal is to minimize risk and maximize any extra income through both dividends and bond payments as Steve has. As always, go out and do lots of research. There are many different options for your portfolio, and I'm not saying that you can't hold any individual stocks and then it's only ETFs. In fact, plenty of portfolios are blended. This is just to provide you with an example to get you thinking. You can check out the links in the description for some helpful articles too to get started. All that said, thanks for watching this video on building a better portfolio. What does your portfolio look like and what plans do you have for the long term? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below or join my Discord where we can banter about stocks and ETFs all day. Until next time, have a happy Thanksgiving to all those that celebrate, and I will see all of you in the next episode of Dollars and Cents.